my friends, no story ever written for the screen is as dramatic as the story of the screen itself. Tonight, we write another chapter in that story. Far indeed have we advanced from that few seconds of shadow of a serpentine dancer 30 years ago when the motion picture was born to this public demonstration of the vitaphone synchronizing the reproduction of sound with the reproduction of action. The future of the motion picture is as far flung as all the tomorrows, rendering greater and still greater service as the chief amusement of the majority of all of our people and the sole amusement of millions and millions exercising an immeasurable influence as a living, breathing thing on the ideas and the ideals, the customs and the costumes, the hopes and the ambitions of countless men, women, and children. In the presentation of these pictures, music plays an invaluable part. The motion picture, too, is a most potent factor in the development of a national appreciation of good music. That service will now be extended as the Vitaphone shall carry symphony orchestration to the town halls of the hamlets. It has been said that the art a vocalist and instrumentalist is ephemeral, that he creates, but for the moment. Now, neither the artist nor his art will ever wholly die. Long experimentation and research by the Western Electric Company and the Bell Telephone Laboratories supplemented by the efforts of Warner Brothers and Mr. Walter J. Rich, have made this great new instrument possible. And to them, and to all who have contributed to this achievement, I offer my congratulations and my best wishes. To the Warner Brothers, to whom is due credit for this, the beginning of a new era in music and motion pictures, I offer my felicitations and my sincerest appreciation. It is an occasion indeed with which the public and the motion picture industry are equally gratified. It is another great service, and service is the supreme commitment of life.